Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is America's 300 million sci-fi arsenal, the advanced combat rifle program. But not the fat electrician. Sounds like some <laughs> Fallout weapon or something. Yeah, uh, I, I saw the second part of it. Uh, I didn't know it was the second part. So this is the first part. I, I, I reacted that yesterday, right? Pretty sure it was the yesterday. Yeah, it was like an insane weapon, a G36 and a grenade launcher combined. A basically a war crime, apparently. Is this a war crime as well? I don't know. But yeah, this is I guess another program that they basically tried to do. I didn't know. Uh, obviously, I don't know much about guns, but I didn't know that they, in very recent years, they haven't made that much uh, progress in making good weapons or things. I always assume like they make probably some weapons every few years, and then I realize, wait a minute, that's not the case. So I guess this is one of the most uh, latest uh, attempt to make a futuristic weapon. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. The fat electrician is great, basically for you know covering st stuff like this, anything military related or government related, I guess in general. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. Every crazy gun from every sci-fi movie in the 1990s is actually real, and they all came from this program. Today we're talking about the Advanced Combat Rifle Program. Ladies and gentlemen, it all started out so innocent in 1986 when the U US government came out and said, hey, our current service rifle is EM-16. We're looking for something a little bit more accurate. And when we say a little, we mean like twice as accurate. We want 100% improvement in accuracy across the board. That's the only stat we care about. We don't care about anything else. Just build the gun. But first a word from our sponsor, because this video is brought to you by my favorite sporting goods store, Shields. They've got a bunch of really cool retail locations all across the United States and an even better online store where you can get pretty much anything that has anything to do with going outside or being physically active or beef jerky. They have a bunch of beef jerky too. Anyways, if you use the link on my website or in the description down below, you're gonna get free shipping on your order. Let's get back to this video. Just build the gun. This Okay, seriously, like, what is that American thing, right? I've noticed that a lot, that even uh, shops and things that has nothing to do with the food, that somehow sells food, right? Like furniture, some kind of a furniture shop, uh, you know, what is a big chain there? Ah, fuck, I forgot the name, Swedish chain, right? Uh, some kind of furniture shop and they're gonna have some food section there, like selling beef or something like that, like... Isn't that like something like seeing food in an airport? You're like, should I eat it? I mean, it's an airport. I mean, how fresh it's going to be. Isn't that an issue like that? I don't know. <laughs> That's just weird. This exact moment, every single firearms contractor on the planet zooms in and they're like, excuse me, I get full creative reign to do whatever I want as long as it's accurate. And the US government's like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's see what you guys can come up with. At which point, they freak out. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. Okay, but then they reel it back in and they're like, hold on, calm down. Calm down, it's okay. What's the budget on this program? To which the United States military is kind of like, yeah, well, you know, whatever, we'll pay for it in the end. Just have fun. Stay calm! Everybody just calm down! And at that exact moment, <laughs> sanity, sobriety, common sense, they all leave the chat because all of these weapon manufacturers have just went from, we're gonna build a new gun to we're gonna build something to hunt aliens with. And not only that, they're gonna try to make a... I mean, look, there's a saying that the last thing you should tell an engineer that he can do anything, he'll freak out. There's a saying out there, right? You need to give him specific guidelines of what you want, what is your limited budget, what is the limitations there. If you tell an engineer you can do anything, he'll just will, will go ballistic or something. So this is equivalent to that. Telling an basically gun makers are engineers, basically telling them there is no budget, we just want something accurate, you can do anything, there you go. They're gonna go insane bajillion dollars while they do it because every weapons contractor gets the exact same idea. Not only are they gonna build a gun, but they're gonna recreate what a bullet is and then build a gun to fire this new type of bullet. That way they get to You're patent the gun kidding me. and they get to patent the ammunition for it. So then the US government is they on the hook new to bullet? buy all their ammunition from this one sole provider. Just straight up, Jimmy, grab the wheel, throw it away. We're gonna reinvent the whole thing. So all four companies take the wheel, throw it away. They're gonna reinvent the whole thing from the ground up. So a ton of different companies submitted their ideas, but America decided they were gonna go with four of them for testing. And those four were AAI, Steyr, Heckler & Koch, and Colt. All right, starting off with AAI and Steyr, they both had pretty much the same idea. They weren't gonna shoot bullets at the enemy anymore. They were gonna shoot flechettes at the enemy, which if you don't know, is just a big metal dart. They literally created the needler from the Halo video game. It's my favorite Covenant weapon. And their logic behind doing that was that these flechettes were gonna be more accurate because they were hauling ass out of the back. Is this, isn't this like the closest thing to a bolt gun you can have, right? I mean, it's like, I don't know. It kind of make. First of all, it's not gonna be as effective as a proper bullet. 
right? Doesn't like that doesn't look like something that can be accurate as bullet. Bullet is one of the most accurate aerodynamic thing there can be. If you want to invent something better than that, I don't I don't know know what to think of it. It has to be some version of bullet in itself barrels of these guns okay to put it into perspective the muzzle velocity of a 556 round is like 3,000 feet per second ish an ak-47 762 by 39 ammunition is going like 2200 feet per second these flechettes were leaving the barrel at 4900 feet per second this thing's basically shooting fucking laser beams out of it and this essentially meant that the shooter wasn't going to have to compensate for bullet drop in theory increasing its accuracy so that was a general idea of what they both kind of built their gun around and pretty much where the similarities end because a styre decided Decided they were going to put their flechette inside of a polymer cased ammunition. The polymer cased rounds weighed like half as much as a brass cased round, so that's good because you can carry more ammunition, more accuracy by volume. That's what America's all about. They're going to love it, in theory. The issue they ran into though is that when you fire a bullet, it's basically a small controlled explosion, and when you do that inside of a piece of brass, that brass absorbs a lot of heat and then immediately gets ejected out of a gun. But when you do it with a polymer casing, the polymer does not absorb nearly as much heat before it gets ejected, meaning that all that heat goes right back into the gun, you know, like the barrel. This meant that the barrels, A, wore out way quicker, and B, if you fired too much and the barrel got too hot, and then you shoved your polymer cased ammunition into the chamber, it would just cook off and the round would explode in your face. So, the Steyr gun is out. Damn, okay. AAI, on the other hand, decided that they were going to put their flechette inside of a 5.56 brass casing, and it worked way better. The barrels lasted longer, the rounds weren't going to cook off. It seemingly fixed the issue that Steyr had. But like I said, they stuck the flechette inside of a 5.56 round, which, if you don't know, is the same size as the M16 round, meaning that in theory you could stick these flechettes inside of an M16 and you could stick regular 5.56 ammunition inside of this new AAI rifle, but the AAI rifle wasn't equipped to handle it and as soon as you tried to fire a regular 5.56 round it would more than likely blow up in your face. So AAI is out. They broke the cardinal rule of engineering, okay? If it's not supposed to go there, make sure it doesn't fit there. Because if it fits there, a bunch of military dudes are absolutely going to put it there at least once, twice if they like it, just to see what happens. Okay, and I realize that the vast majority of my audience... I mean, I never thought of that, but that is true, right? Like any gun out there that uses the same ammo, right? I mean can handle the same ammo, right? Like the, all ammos are different and that's why whatever gun can handle what ammo, that is the only thing that fit. Now, if you make a, you know, a same M16 type of ammo, but use this shit, and now you use a regular M16 ammo into this newer gun, yeah, it's gonna cause problems. I love how basically they're just like so excited, they're just trying to make this shit without seeing the problems, like the, how Stair, basically stair, stair basically didn't even realize that using the different type of chamber will cause a heat issues. Like how do how do they miss engineering like that? Is just like insane. Like that should be caught up in the blueprint in the first place before you even go into making it. Audience is probably male, but for the small female minority, if you don't believe me on this, let's conduct an experiment. Pull your phone out, hit record, post it to the internet later because I want to see. But walk into a room where any man in your life is just sitting down watching TV. It could be your dad, your husband, your boyfriend, your dude that's a friend, any grown ass man, and just ask him out of left field, like, hey, do circular saw blades fit on your weed whacker? He is immediately going to look at you and go, nope and go back to watching TV because he knows with absolute certainty they don't because he fucking tried, I promise you. Six months ago, there was a baby tree that the weed whacker couldn't take out and the tree was talking shit. He had to address the situation and that was the solution that he tried first. Every dude does it. Moral of the story, if it fits there, it goes there. If you don't want it to go there, don't let it fit. Okay, moving on. Next up, we See, the problem with the fat electrician is I think he's living in the past. You really don't know what time he's living in. Most people, most men, <laughs> probably didn't, haven't even cut anything, haven't even used the weed whacker or whatever. Probably sitting in the sofa playing video games, that's it. That's the real world right now. Like the example of men he's using it doesn't apply anymore to most people. <laughs> We have the magnetic accelerator gun from the Demolition Man movie. The last produced handheld weapon across millennium displaced the flow of neutron 
Demolition man, right? So what, 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 what in these batteries? What size? I mean, what, what the fuck do you find batteries in the future? That is actually the G11 and is manufactured by Heckler Does Coke. I mean, Heckler and Coke, which if you don't know is a German company and the G11 yeah. actually fires a caseless ammunition. That red block is actually the propellant or the black powder itself. So that entire thing gets burned up and there's nothing that actually ejects out of the gun. Yet somehow the Germans figured out how to solve the heating issue that the polymer cased ammunition had by not having a casing at all. And this is why this gun has earned the internet nickname of Kraut Space Magic. And while that caseless ammunition is super cool, it's not actually gonna make it more accurate than the M16. So their strategy for that was to make this gun shoot at 2100 rounds per minute in three round burst. That meant that the gun was so fast in three round burst mode that when you pulled the trigger, it would fire all three rounds before the person shooting the gun actually felt the recoil from the first bullet. And that worked out Damn. great, but after that third round left the barrel, it kicked you like a horse. <laughs> Which is a really interesting That's concept nice. and it did appear to work. So why on earth didn't America pick the G11? Well, first of all, the caseless ammunition was gonna be really expensive. And secondly, this thing yeah. was designed by Germans left unsupervised with no budget. So obviously this gun is way over engineered. Yeah, they tried to hide it by the fact that they made the outside of the gun look like it's made out of four pixels. But on the inside, when you go to take it apart, a fucking grandfather clock slides out of it. I mean, yeah, is the gun reliable? According to the testing, yeah, it was super reliable, but. <laughs> this like so German, right? Hey, hey, come here, come here. What? Then just open with the screwdriver. What the fuck is that? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Where do these gears come from? <laughs> this is so German, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this is insane, man. Seriously, man. That was like three bursts, that clip. How fast did that shit? That is insane. And before even the video started, well, you know, basically they said that just you have no budget. You can do whatever. And they just went insane, new ammo. Immediately the thought came into my mind that no weapon wor is worth anything if it's not like easily available or easily made it's not even about money it's about resources like uh, th there's a reason why whatever ammo is working right now people usually just use that ammo right with uh, whatever weapon and things you know comes out because it's just it's mass production is just there munition is out there all the ammunition right if you have to make everything from the scratch that's just going to be insane everything mechanical will fail eventually and when that thing fails you're gonna have to take it to a watchmaker that's got a degree in modern art anybody has more studies knows that to fix the problem so for those reasons the g11 is also out which is unfortunate because it really would have tied together the minecraft look that the american military had going on there with digicam <laughs> And now we get to my personal favorite because the sheer amount of balls it took to try to pull this off is unfathomable Colt's entry. The Colt oh, weapon shit. has go. evolved from the M16A2 design. Yeah, that is straight up an M16. There's nothing special about it whatsoever. You gotta realize Colt has been selling guns to the US military for a very long time. They sold them the Colt 1911. They sold them most of the M16s they had at this point in time. They know how to sell to the US government. They know their audience. So they Seriously, like, look at that. This is so good. It's like a running joke or some shit. You give money to Germans, this is what they will come up with. There's some kind of space age type of fucking uh, weapon with insane mechanics. You give money to the American, this is what come out with. Same thing with the staple, you know, staple different name. Hey, here you go. This is not M16, this is M17. <laughs> Walked into the lab and they're like, here's the plan. We're not going to do a fucking thing. We're going to make a big, ugly foregrip, slap it on there. We're going to say it helps with target acquisition. Then we're going to slap a scope on top that actually makes it more accurate. And then we're going to design a new type of bullet where two bullets go in one casing and it's going to be called a duplex round. Yeah, Colt is walking in to pitch this new gun to Uncle Sam like, Let me show you something. Does that look great to you? This entire plan is so stupid, it's genius. They're going to walk into this meeting trying to pitch this gun to Uncle Sam, and they're like, it's here's the deal, work, all right? your guys already know how to shoot this gun. It's the same shit we've already sold you before, except now, every time you hit the enemy, it's worth double XP. Guess what? Every magazine your guys are carrying has got 60 bullets in it, not 30. You ever heard of semi-automatic? This is dose automatic. Three round burst just became six round burst. It's still got full auto, but now it's on 2x speed. So at this point, it's looking like Colt's gonna win the bid and America's gonna be shooting BOGOs at every bad guy for the next 50 years. And then the, like the one dude that all these weapons manufacturers didn't give a big Christmas bonus to is like, hey, um, if the only thing making that gun more accurate is the scope and all these other guns also have scopes, why don't we try putting one of those scopes on the regular M16 and just see what happens? <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? Every time I try to do something fun, you make it not 
that way. So that's exactly what they do. The scopes on the G11 and the Steyr are fixed in place and can't be removed, but the scope that's on the Colt and the AAI both can be, so they pop those off, throw them on a regular M16, and holy shit, it's more accurate than all of the other guns. So that's exactly what America goes with. The scope that's on the Colt ends up being... I mean, is this really surprise that a scope makes a proper assault rifle more accurate than whatever iron sight or whatever that is? It's, it's common sense, like, come on. It's like, it just... <laughs> I mean, M16, to, be, to give it credit, M16 is that kind of accurate, right? If you put scope on AK-47, I'm, I'm sure people have done it. I'm not sure it's going to be that accurate, right? AK-47 is awesome, but M16 is like just more stable. So yeah, it works. In the M134 scope that goes on pretty much every 240 and saw to this day. And the scope that was on the AAI ends up being the ACOG. So this is great news because now America just has to buy a bunch of scopes and they don't have to buy a bunch of new guns as well. And now they're only out the money that it took for all the research of developing four new guns completely from the ground up, which is like, you know, $300 million to figure out that if you put a scope on a gun, it gets more accurate. You know, I started this video with every intention of doing the XM29 project next and then the army's new rifle, the XM7 after that. But I honestly don't know if I have it in me after this one. I need a beer. Um, so I guess in conclusion, this Excellent is the story of how America ended up getting ACOGs and M134 machine gun optics because the U.S. military decided they were going to spend $300 million to come to the conclusion that sticking a scope on top of a rifle does in fact make it more accurate. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. You know, I think the part that upsets me the most about all of this is we spent $300 million on this dumb shit, and it's been like 40 years, and I still can't find an ACOG for less than like $1,000. I mean... What is the lens inside that ACOG? Because I do know cameras, and how lenses work, camera lenses, and why they are costlier. Why would, I don't know, the scope has that kind of complicated lens inside of it that would cost a thousand dollars? I think they're just, you know, asking that because they can. It's like Apple technology, Apple strategy. They're going to pay for it, right? It's like people who want to buy, modify guns and buy guns are going to modify and buy guns. And that is the only scope that would work on a gun, and that, that specific gun, ACOG for M16. What are they going to do? Make another scope by themselves? So I guess that's why they're asking thousand. But yeah, as far as this thing goes, like, yeah, kind of makes sense. One thing I've noticed in any basically major scale things as weapons, right, throughout the wars and things, that simplicity is always like the best answer rather than going any complicated way. And that's why you don't see that many new weapons, that many, you know, mass protein things because what are, like guns are, whatever guns we have is deadly enough. You need a simple modification, it's going to be good enough, right? You don't need some better thing. And like I said in that XM29 video reaction yesterday that, if you want to make anything better, you have to like, uh, you know, think about how to deal with recoil because recoil is the only thing that comes into way to you know, making anything better, right? If you want to make anything like big caliber automatic weapon, recoil will be the issue. So you need to find, uh, you know, new and latest technologies to basically think about the recoil. That is the only way to go. Right? Imagine if, like I said, Scar H basically firing as fast as M16, how insane that would be. Something like that. Rather than making new ammo and all that shit, there's there's no reason for that, right? And if anything, like if, you know, hundreds of so years from now, people will be using some form of lasers, and you know, people say like, oh, that's so Star Wars and shit. No, that's that's actually going to be true because ballistic weapons. I don't think they're going to go away because it works, right? People have guns, but people still like you know use knives and shit. People still punch each other, right? So you know, ballistic weapons are not going anywhere. But I think the future is going to be much more laser oriented. But yeah. All right, well, that was America's 300, 300 million is not that much when you think of development and guns in general, right? All those development using three hundred million is like yeah, about right. Uh, I'm surprised it's not in billions, basically, right? All these companies, that's how they would have charged. But okay, All right. If you like my and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.